because I printed it out. So, right. if anybody needs it. So, Bless. whoever, you know, I'm trying to get a little on my phone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I just take it. I just print it out. It happens a lot. Oh. Like, you, you know, Full Metal? Yes. Full Metal. Cool. The first Full Metal Alchemist. And because there's two separate series. Ah. The first one was because they went to where the manga was and they just kept going. Oh. Hey, y'all. Good afternoon. Second. Thanks for coming to our panel. How are you? All right, people have had a chance to eat. Y'all need to be more energetic. <laughs> Let's try this again. How is everyone? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so my name is Tanya. I am your moderator. And I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves. Just We're going to have some housekeeping. We're going to have some conversation. And then we'll, we'll have time for Q&A. Anyone who's seen me moderate a panel knows that when I say Q&A, the Q is for question. I do not care about your life story, your backstory your context, because we have limited time for Q&A. If you want to have an in-depth conversation, we'll be around after the panel, but for the sake of brevity and for being polite, when we get to Q&A, have an actual question. All right, I'm just going to start here. Everyone, please introduce yourselves, and I'll go last. And please say your pronouns. OK. My name is X Mira Mira, and my pronouns are she and her. What do you do, Mira? I am a streamer, a content creator. <laughs> And um, I stream full time on Twitch. Hi, I'm Miss Ashrox, and my pronouns are <laughs> she, her, and I'm a variety streamer on Twitch part time. Woo! <laughs> my name is Jenna Sequa. Pronouns are also she, her, and I'm also a variety streamer with a focus on The Sims from time to time. And uh, my name is Majin Taj. My pronouns are he and him. And uh, I recently, I guess, a variety streamer, but focus more on first person shooters, Destiny, Overwatch type things. I said, I'm your moderator, Cypher Tier. I'm a part time variety broadcaster. I'm also on Twitch's DD channel on Rivals Waterdeep, and I GM on Roll20 app, a Star Trek show. And I am a uh, Take This Stream ambassador for this year. My pronouns are she, her. All right, you know we got a bunch of black folks in the room, so we just went ahead and said, act right. Because <laughs> the ladies on the panel can attest to me giving that mom or auntie look, so I just went with it. Um, please tweet the panel. We actually have a signal this year, unlike last year. You can actually tweet people and text folks. Um, again, trigger warning, because depending on what comes up, we may talk about things that have been upsetting, racism, homophobia, et cetera. Um, so if anyone is upset, bothered, please feel free to excuse yourself from the room. Do not feel like you just have to stay. If something bothers you, feel free to go outside, take a breather. Not all the way outside, because you'll never make it back to this convention <laughs> center. It was nice seeing you if you do actually leave the whole hall. Um, and again, when we get to the Q&A, it is for a Q&A. So we're going to take a moment of self-reflection on us as streamers. Uh, so Mira, what, what do you have to say about these things? Okay, so when you start streaming and you begin content creating, yeah, let me get this mic closer. When you begin streaming and content creation, you want to kind of like take a look at yourself. What things about you kind of like stand out? Are you really skilled at a game? Do you have a really good personality? Are you humorous? Are you informative? You have to kind of just sit down and reflect on yourself as like a person, as an individual, and what gravitates people to you in general. And uh, yeah. All right, other folks, do you have thoughts about like finding out what your thing is as a streamer? I had something I wanted to say <laughs> as far as taking a look at you. I think it's also good to set realistic expectations upon yourself so that way you don't feel like you're somewhere different than somewhere else. For instance, this year I made a goal of getting partnered this year. Uh, I'm also planning a wedding, so ain't nobody really had that much time to stream this year. That was an unrealistic <laughs> expectation. So I think it's very important that we do set realistic expectations and goals when you're taking that internal look at yourself. Right, anyone else before we move on? They nailed it down. What? <laughs> they nailed it down. They did. Uh, Perfectly. I'll just say, uh, going along with knowing who you are, also, don't try and be somebody else. You, you can't keep up the facade of not being yourself for too long. If you're going for a longevity, so just being you, sticking to your strengths, as she said, is uh, going to be the easiest on you. Yeah, and, and you know, if you see somebody else really killing it, playing like Dead by Daylight or something like that, and you know that you actually hate that game, don't go play it. Just don't. try to get numbers, because mm -hmm. exactly. we can tell. 
Because have you ever watched somebody, and you can tell they have that dead inside look of like, I'm doing this for the coin. But you can tell they really, really hate the game they're playing, but they think, oh, I'm going to get numbers if I play this. Come on, raise your yeah. hand. Ain't no shame in it. <laughs> um, but, you know, find out and think about who you're not. Because a lot of times we try to emulate people that are successful. When that's not who you are, you can only be you. And if people are, are feeling what you're putting out, they will come to you. So let's talk about it because all of us kind of have different amounts that we stream. Some of us do it part-time. Some of us do it full-time. Or Mira, are you the only full-time streamer? Or are you Imagine? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm full-time. He's full-time too. Okay, because I'm also part-time because I try to run a business on the side. Um, so how often are you all creating content for our full-time folks and then our part-time folks? Let me see. So full-time, I stream. Uh, basically, I try to stream five days out of the week. But as of the past, I want to say the past few months, I've had a very, very hectic like schedule. So I haven't been able to adhere to that. But I try to stream five days a week. And if I don't, I try to like output content elsewhere, maybe YouTube, to try to like balance it out. Like if I didn't get a stream, here's a video, I'll be back. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my content output for the week. And Majin, what about you? Um, I try and stream every day, as often as I can. It doesn't happen. I'm a, I'm a father of two. Uh, my son is five and you know he just started kindergarten this year, so he's going to school full time and playing football. So you know a lot of times I'll have to if, if I want to stream, if something comes up or I need to be there for, you know, my kids, I can't. But if not, I'm, I'm trying to trying to be live. Hey, Ash and Jenna, I mean, because Jenna, you're planning a wedding, so you, you found out the hard way. There's not much time. Yeah. You can go first, Ash. <laughs> well, I, I work full time. I, I run on two hours of sleep a night because I, <laughs> I literally run on two hours of sleep because I want to pursue my career as a full time streamer eventually. And it's really hard on me, but I try my best. I work 40 hours a week. I stream maybe maybe almost 40 hours a week as so, well. So the and then I'm in slide. school full time. So yeah, two yeah. hours of sleep. So the yeah. self-care slide is going to be your section. <laughs> <laughs> I see. OK, so I feel like if you stream 40 hours a week, you're still full time. That's not part time. <laughs> I, when I, <laughs> When I am actually streaming, <laughs> I do stream about 20 to 30 hours a week on top of a 37 and a half hour job on top of doing Postmates so I can afford to get married. <laughs> but I also try to, un unfortunately, I have a very active social life and that interferes with Twitch a lot. I'm like, friends, stop calling me. But I do try to produce other content. So like if we're going out, okay guys, look at my Snapchat. Your Snapchat is content. You get your viewers engaged so they can see what you're doing outside. Hey, Jenna's Jenna, not streaming. What we have a slide on that. Oh my bad, never mind. <laughs> That's good. I just don't want to jump ahead. It's okay. But that's content. <laughs> Um, so, you know, we already talked a little bit about following our niche or following trends, but I want to talk about branding because a lot of people do not understand the power of branding. This isn't a knock on anyone. Some people just literally don't know of having, like, a consistent name across all platforms. And Majin knows I'm about to give him the dirtiest <laughs> of dirty looks because someone on this panel does not have a custom YouTube with enough followers. Mm. That would be that guy down there. But so we're going to talk about this. <laughs> You all, I know everyone on the panel, if not well. It's just like, um, you are my example of what not to do on this panel. <laughs> oh, we broke it. Uh-oh. Well, we broke, we broke the stream. Okay. 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 <laughs> See, professional streamers can't even have a panel without breaking something. Um, but, you know, if you are in a position where you've got enough folks on YouTube following you, and you're starting Twitter, you're starting your Twitch channel, have the same name everywhere. Because if I got to look for... Like Jenna2845 on Twitch and then Jenna Sequa on YouTube and who knows on Instagram or Snapchat. I'm never going to figure out this is exactly the same person. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that are like doing branding, because Jen, Jenna and Mira, I feel like you all like do all the branding and all the social media stuff more than I could ever hope to. Really? What? Uh, yes. Mira, you are a marketing <laughs> genius. Are you yes. kidding me? Girl, bye. Like, I found you because other people tweeting you and your Sims. So yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the power of Twitter shall compel you to come to someone's stream on occasion. The hashtags. Oh. So let's talk about the power of branding because a lot of people don't think about it. And they don't think about like how consistency and putting that content in other places besides Twitch is important. 
It is extremely important. Um, I actually, oh, it is extremely important. I apologize. It's extremely important because I've carried my community to Twitch from, I want to say, at least seven to eight other different social medias. I literally post to Tumblr. I post to Twitter. I post to Snapchat, Instagram, uh, Facebook. You try anything, like any social media, you try all of them. I think the only one I haven't gotten around to yet is Pinterest. I've, you know... Posts everywhere, you try clips, you try photos, you try different things that'll captivate people. You use certain colors, certain things. In my case, there's a lot of wild content going on with the Sims dance and twerking. So I guess my, you know, ish, my thing would be, I guess, shock value and like humor. It's like, what, what is going on with these Sims? Like, what, I have to click on this, like what's happening? And then you incorporate these things with like a hashtag, like my hashtag is xmirimera streams. So I use that hashtag as a way for people to find and follow my content, for my community to stay, you know, together, stay intact, and for people to keep up with me on social media, even if they maybe don't necessarily want to directly follow me for whatever reason. Um, you want to make sure your branding, your name is consistent across all avenues, um, your website, your Twitch, your Twitter, your Facebook, Tumblr, your PSN username, your Xbox username. I can't be X Mira Mira and my PSN username is XX Bunny Girl 735 or oh, like my epic. You? Yeah, like my <laughs> epic is like something totally different. You wanna stay consistent because it's easier for people to find you and remember you and you know, keep in contact with you. I think Twitter and Discord are the most important. Discord really, because you can com communicate with your community at all times after stream. And you can have movie nights in Discord. You can post when you're live. You can make food porn channels. Everyone can post their food. You can selfies, everything. And yeah. I even have a venting station in my Discord server so everyone can talk about their feelings, what they're going through. And that's how we connect as a community. And in Twitter, for me, for branding, when I go live, I post GIFs. Every GIFs. GIFs. Don't start that on GIF, this GIF, no. Not GIF, the GIF GIF, GIF, GIF garment. No, 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 no. Not today. GIF is phonetically I make a correct. I make a different GIF. Stop. GIF for right. Hold on. I'm putting on mom voice. No. This stops right now. Let's stay on topic. Yeah, I make a different GIF every stream. It could just me dancing or me doing Turn orange up. justice or something. Yeah. That what makes people click your channel. Yes. Oh, what is this girl doing today? Or I can make a GIF of my mom. They're like, oh, Mama Rocks is on stream. <laughs> yeah. Or I think Twitter and Discord are the most important uh, for me. Instagram, I don't take selfies that much, but everyone loves a good selfie to look at. They're like, oh, what is this girl into? Her makeup's on fleek. Right? Uh, says says yeah. the one with the perfect makeup on the panel. Right. <laughs> um, but one thing, I, I put it there on purpose, but I wonder, especially since we're talking about being people of color on Twitch and other places, Having a method of contact in your bio. I mentioned this on Twitter because for a long time I did not have a method of contact in my, in my Twitter bio or anywhere else because, well, people, we're black folks on the internet. We know what happens. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about that in that context because I had to explain to someone why you can't always do this if you're a person of color, female identified, queer, all of the above, because the emails that I have gotten over the years, y'all, so it's not always safe to do so. And I want to know what your feelings are on contact method somewhere on your public places and why you or why you don't have that. I have them everywhere as far as, yeah. I have my contact methods everywhere. Uh, at this point, I haven't received any like hate mail or anything vile in Knock on any wood. of my social channels as of yet. It never goes further than the Twitch chat. But um, yeah, I, I decided to keep them up because... I'm not going to let, you know, a couple of trolls, a couple of a-holes stop what I want to do and stop what I decide to pursue. So if it happens, it happens, and I will block them. And if it gets serious, I'll figure out what I can do. But until then, I'm leaving my information visible for whoever needs to uh, get it. If you have your business email on your Twitter or your Twitch panels that bring sponsorship opportunities to you, I received four emails this week. For sponsorship opportunities, just saying, have your email there. And again, if you have those trolls coming to your email, screw them, all right? They're nothing. <laughs> they don't understand our black power and the impact we have True. on the Twitch community. 
So, yes, please put your information on every social media. It will help Everywhere. you. <laughs> Trust me. I have my contact information up, but it's a business email, so it's not my personal email that my mom has. I also try very, very hard not to have my real name anywhere. If I put my name anywhere, it's first name Jenna, last name Saqua. Like, that is my name. So I feel like when you have those kind of barriers where they really have to call Sherlock Holmes to figure out who you are, that can help you. Because like they said, putting those emails um, do help with sponsor opportunities. I haven't gotten one yet, but here's hoping. They're still up there, just in case someone ever does reach out to me. And I, I want to touch on the more personal side. Um, you know, I, I used to, I think probably still do link people to my Facebook because I just don't care. Um, <laughs> but, you know, even like Snapchat, like she was saying, using Snapchat and people, you know, it's always good to communicate with your, with your audience and having an open line of communication because it makes them feel more connected to you and they're more likely to come around. But a lot of people will take advantage of that. And it's probably worse for you ladies, I'm sure. But, you know, you put a picture on Snapchat and they want to personally message you like, you know, hey, what you doing and all that stuff. And. You just kind of have to find a, uh, a a medium ground with people who just who maybe are asking you something and want some help, and people who are just too forward with trying to get to know you or just talk to you all the time, like on a super one-on-one -on -one level. Like you know, we don't we don't have time for that. Yeah, and Can't we do we, we do have a panel about safety because I talk about that quite a bit, and uh, Jenna was on a panel about that with me before. But uh, let's talk about the the nit nutty the. What? One thing I want to touch oh, sure. on um, before we move on. Sure. Basically, you want to kind of put yourself into the mind frame of a consumer and a person who, you know, you're looking at what you, the content you want to consume. So you ask yourself little things. Is this annoying that I see on my feed, like how people like to excessively use hashtags on, say, Twitter? Do you find that annoying? Things that, did this capture my eye? Did this make me click on the stream? Did this make me, you know, engage? You want to take note of the things that you see on your timeline and use these things to get other people to engage or at least try it out and see how it works for you specifically. Cool. And that actually dovetails a lot in analytics. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Mira especially wanted to talk about this because um, knowing that there are Twitch staff in the room, I'm going to say this anyway, Communities was a way for us to find each other, and they're gone now. There's not a people of color tag on Twitch anymore. There's LGBT, there's stuff about speed runs, all this other stuff, and even coloring. But if I want to say POC or even black female streamer, those tags don't exist, and since we can't, we can suggest tags. Using analytics and using a way to do that, because unless you've got a Twitch team at this point, how are you going to find people? Because a Google list isn't very dynamic. I used to have one. And half those people don't stream anymore for whatever reason, so I got this dead list out there. But if you're not in a position to have a Twitch team, because partners are the ones that get Twitch teams, how are you going to find other brown folks to stream unless you're out here trawling everything, like, oh, look, one more brown person is playing, like, PUBG or Dead by Daylight or <laughs> pick a game. So we're going to talk We're gonna talk a little bit more about analytics, and I'm going to give it over to Mira for that because, you know, she is all about those analytics. I failed <laughs> stats several times in college. Don't look at me for analytics. Um, but there's not a good way for us to find each other. So hopefully either communities will come back or we'll be able to get these tags back in the system. So I would love to be able to sort on people of color, black female streamers, black queer streamers, because I know we're here. I know a few of us like on one hand or around this room somewhere, but it'd be nice to not have to crawl through a haystack and find folks. So uh, just, just quick show of hands, how many people use communities? I know I'm guilty, I didn't use it myself, but I'm gonna tell on myself. <laughs> how many people wish we still had them? How oh, oh, me. oh, thank you. <laughs> and then how many people would like to have tags like POC, black female streamer? Okay, so, the, so tweet it, folks. Use the community <laughs> feedback form, and this is my moment of proselytizing. Use the form. We can suggest tags. Many of you send in the same thing. Submit the same form. Say, I want this tag and why. So that is my one PSA for the panel. <laughs> so Mira, let's talk about these analytics. What you got? Okay, so let me see here. Oh. Like I said, don't look at me for stats. I'm the wrong person. <laughs> so these are some, oh no, that's way too small. Oh, here, you stand here. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> Break the chair. All right, so 
how I get to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> the landscape, right, that was the, that was the plan. All right, the landscape of social media users. So basically, I'm just going to roughly go over this and kind of give you guys my experience on analytics. Um, this was some information that I grabbed online. It's not a whole lot of in-depth uh, information when it comes to streamers and content creators, especially like when it comes to streamers and content creators of color. Um, so basically here are like the breakdowns of the different social medias and the different groups of people who use these different social medias. Um, women, adults, is, ugh, adults ages eight to 18 to 29 use Facebook. Uh, 18 to 29 African Americans, urban residents use Twitter. Women, adults under 50, whites, those with some college education, Pinterest, Instagram. You guys can take a look at that, but I want to explain. So I play Sims, right? And when I first started in the community, um, I have a very, how do I explain this? I have a very colorful personality. I say yeah. what's on my mind, and my content is very wild. This is what I spoke on earlier about, like, shock value and people saying, well, what the hell is that? Is that a sim twerking? Did somebody just, this happy-go-lucky game is, like, so crazy. How does she do it? What's going on? So I had to sit down and ask myself, basically, where is my demographic? Where are the people of color who maybe would culturally relate maybe to, you know, slang or terms that I would use, AAVE, the music I listen to, um, the type of interest that I have outside of streaming? Where would I find these people? So just, you know, regular, you know, using Tumblr, sharing my content. I used YouTube, custom content creation, and hashtags to build a community on Tumblr. And I basically, you know, we move everybody around Tumblr and follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch, YouTube. And at this point, I want to say I have about 20,000 followers on Tumblr, 84,000 on YouTube, 20,000 on Twitch as of the other day. And that's just basically me seeking out my demographic and just, like I said before, trying different social medias to see who and where and how frequent, you know, different people are using these social medias. Say you are, for example, into first-person shooters and you notice that there's a huge demographic for first-person shooters on, say, Facebook. So you want to join Facebook groups and maybe post compilation clips of how good you are at the game and just different things that you know will capture the attention of potential viewers to bring people in. My cutting plan worked. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about networking. Um, so show of hands, how many people here actively came to TwitchCon to network? Okay, what do you all think networking is? Just quick shout from the audience. Making friends. <laughs> I know it sounded skeptical, but there's a reason I said that. So other, other quick things from the audience? Making lasting relationships, you are correct. Because friendship is great, but friendship don't always pay the bills. Let's be real. Folks have bills to pay. I can be your friend, but I can also be broke. <laughs> um, but networking is also having <laughs> meaningful relationships and not just using people. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna be that person while I've got the mod mic. Don't befriend someone just to use them. Do not find somebody that's got a bigger follower count, their partner, what have you and try to hustle with them just so you can ride their coattails. Because people, A, they'll figure it out. They will talk about you. Streaming is actually a very small world, even though there's a lot of us in this room. Because people talk. They have Discord. They have Twitter DMs. I will call somebody in a minute if I think they're being shady. Be genuine in your interactions. Um, and I could be that horrible person that talks about a lot of the t bad side of networking, but I'm not. I want the panelists to talk about kind of these bullet points and you know what value has it been for you, especially as a person of color, because this is probably the most brown folks I've seen at TwitchCon. Definitely, I was gonna touch on that. This yeah. is amazing, so give a round yes. of applause. Give yourself no. some applause. Yes. <laughs> or any other con I go to, to be honest, but that's a whole other panel. <laughs> so, yeah. thoughts, be honest, be, be yourself. I'll see, Jenny, you ran your mouth. Now you're not talking. Well, I thought we were going in a line. You know, we normally no, we're go not in going a line. in a line. This isn't elementary yeah. school. Don't you raise your hand. Just talk. People, Jenna. Tell the people. Well, I consider myself to be pretty good at networking. I pretty much network to meet all of these people. Networking is pretty much how I got on this panel, pretty much how I've been gone to most cons that I go to. 
And it's like they said, like making meaningful relationships. And it's kind of, for me, it's kind of like organic. I like to meet people. I like to talk to people. So when I'm doing it, I'm not really thinking about it as networking. It just turns out that because we're in the same business, we have the same mindset, we like the same kind of things, that we are able to come together and figure out how we can all grow together. So I feel like, it, in my opinion, it needs to be organic. It can't be forced. Like, I could never network with Ninja. There's, for what? I don't like Fortnite. So for what? So that just needs to be something that feels natural and comes natural. Any other thoughts? I mean, I can keep talking. <laughs> I want to share. I like to talk. <laughs> well, but let's but let's talk about it though, because you know, like, so before I came to TwitchCon, I got an email from somebody that wanted me to shout out their product on a panel. One, if you work in marketing, don't email people cold like that and be like, talk about my product that you never used or never heard of. It was also for Fortnite. The only way I'm going to ever play Fortnite is if I get like a ridiculous, unattainable sub goal. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That is the only way me and Fortnite shall ever meet on Twitch. What's the goal? 2,000. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it happen. Ooh, challenge. Uh, 2,000 subs is the only way I'm going to play Fortnite. And if I hit 5,000 somebody gets Ninja on there, I will do it. <laughs> and this is being streamed live. So if someone makes that happen, I will, I will go find that dude and buy him a drink. Because 5K <laughs> subs will pay my rent for some while. Um, but let's talk about traveling to events because let's, you know, let's talk about the fact that coming here ain't cheap. We're in California. Ooh, um, a lot of us had to fundraise or we're split in a room with like two or three other people. Hopefully you still like each other by the end of the weekend. <laughs> um, but let's talk about that because stream teams are great. But what about these stream teams that are like gigantic? You're not getting any traction. You're not getting any community it's like, oh, there's this giant list of people streaming, which is, again, sorted and the highest number of viewers. So unless you're getting real high view counts anyway, which means you're probably partnered, you're probably getting a great community, what about someone who's new or is just getting 10, 20, 30 views and isn't getting that community because nobody's finding them because of discoverability? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we already talked about not using people for your gain, but what's the value, especially sitting here at TwitchCon talking about this, as a person of color surrounded in a predominantly white space, both in what we see on Twitch, what we're experiencing here, what is the value of you in going to conventions and meetups as a person of color? I like to go to conventions as a person of color so that I can meet other people of, that are people of color. And it's, it's kind of like good to know that you're not alone. And then when you make that relationship through networking, then hey, next con, I need somewhere to stay. Girl, like um, Cup of Noodle. I met her TwitchCon number two. We roomed together for PAX, the Boston PAX, PAX East. So because we have networked and met together, we're now friends, we went to my bachelorette party and everything, um, because of that connection, because she was another person of color, I feel comfortable rooming with her. She doesn't feel weird when I wrap my hair up. But like, it's just one of those things that because of that, it's great to room with her. And we get to split the cost, because it's very expensive. No idea how I got here this year. <laughs> And it's all because of going to cons is, and meeting people and networking, making those meaningful relationships. And I will say another networking thing that happened for me is Mira Mira found me on Twitch forever. And then when she, when she was still like really on YouTube, and then when she came on Twitch, like she, and we became friends, and then she raided me, and she's a much bigger streamer. And I'm, a lot of my community is because Mira raided me that one time. It was lit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's something we can talk about briefly, too, is like when you... If you're a bigger streamer or your partner, you know somebody just got affiliate, go show them some love. Yeah. And again, don't come in streams and ask for raids. I just mm -hmm. talked about this this morning on host. Don't ask for gift subs. Don't don't come in to my I'm going to stream. Bye. Don't don't do that. Because yeah. it'd be your own people that wear you out. <laughs> um, but let's talk about how to build I'm look, I have had some people I've had to like kick out because they always want they always do that slide, oh I'm gonna go set up my stream, I'll see you later. And I'm like <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so let's talk briefly uh, about building community. Because Mira, you have a great community. Jenna, I, I found, I think I found Jenna because of you rating. Majin, I found because Noodle introduced me to you. And then Ash, I'm, I followed you because of this panel. But then you're cool. I lurk. I am like the lurker <laughs> supreme. Even if I'll say a word in your chat, I could be there hanging out. <laughs> but, you know, like, talk about how you all have built communities because we all have that community that comes back for whatever reason, whether it's we're good folks, we're kind, they know they're safe as a person of color. How do you go out and build that community? 
Okay, so I don't even know how it happened. It's just, I guess, <laughs> hard work and- It was organic? Yeah, it was organic. Like, like I said, I discussed the analytics thing. People come, like-minded people, they come, they find each other, they stay. Discord is really good for that. Like she said earlier, Discord is really good for that. Uh, the community kind of comes together and they congregate and they hang out and they talk. Um, we throw parties, we share content. Like I said, I mainly play Sims, so we all share our creations with each other. I have designated, like a whole designated section in my server for just Sims. And you have to be like part of the community to see it. And it's nothing but like Sims photos and videos and custom content and downloads and some other stuff. But it's like Sims. So I guess it's just a matter of, like I said, using social media, getting the people to come together, keeping everybody together, um, moderating, making sure that people feel safe in the space and making sure people that feel comfortable. You know, a lot of people, they come to your stream after a long day of work and they wanna relax and they wanna unwind, they wanna have fun. And you want to make sure everybody is good and everybody feels good when, you know, it's time to hang out with you and the rest of the community. Yeah, especially when I hear from Ash and Majin, because, like, you know, Ash, you're working full time, and Majin, you're a dad, and you're streaming full time, but, you know, life gets in the way, and not gets in the way, but, you know, life takes precedent. So, how do you then have the time, and how do you go about building your communities? <laughs> well, for me, um, I, for one, I'm terrible at social media. I, they'll tell you, I almost never post on Twitter, everyone's always yelling at me about it. But Discord is my thing, and uh, Discord, if you don't know, is where uh, you you have, it's like the base for your community. A lot of your community will be in there, and um, they'll be talking, like I said, you can do the different channels and just make it fun for them, but it's kind of like a place for them to always hang out. And I like to almost always be in my Discord with my community because I think as you know, streamers and content creators, we, we thrive on being personable and having those personal connections with our community. So I think Discord is the perfect way to do that. Uh, any of my people tell you, I leave like my DMs open to anyone. You can message me at any time and I'll try and be there and answer. Um, but that's just what, what I would say is important. Always be, be there, be available for your community. Well, for me, <laughs> for me, I barely have time to I guess communicate with my community since I'm either sleeping or at work, commuting two hours back home from work because I have a horrible commute. Uh, Discord is the best way I communicate with my community and I don't know, off stream, on camera time is different than off stream. Off stream is, I don't know, you just, you have that time, you can grow on a personal level with your community and I don't really know how I got here, honestly. <laughs> hard work. You're a hard worker. Because you're awesome. I'm trying to think. I don't know how, but I just scream on camera. <laughs> okay, hold on. No, this we're going to have an auntie moment since Ash's mom is actually in the audience. I'm not. You do not no, just I scream just, on camera. I scream at the Well, I, I cuss out Sims for a living, so I can't judge. But, but don't just say you just do whatever. You are here no, because you're I, awesome. I like to support everyone. So that's my main focus of my content. I focus on other people more than myself. She makes us all yeah. feel like a family. That's, Aww. Aww. that's, that's the word I was looking for. Family. For those watching yeah. that couldn't hear, someone from the audience said that Ash makes them all feel like a family. And I think, like, like I, I forgot, I just thought about it, but another thing <laughs> we did was, uh, like, I'm sure everyone's heard of The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix, the, the show and everything. No. You, got, oh, you, I've you heard don't of do it. scary stuff. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> One of my viewers, was uh, she was really about it when it first came out. She wanted to watch it. So there's this website called Rabbit where you can set it up and everyone sees it. And that's also a good thing. There was, like, it was over three nights we watched the whole show with, like, it was, like, five to ten of us at any given time. And that was just a good community bonding moment. Like, I didn't watch it with my real life friend or anyone, I just sat there and watched it with my community. And you know, those, um, the times that you can do that are, are invaluable in promoting the family feel. I wanna piggyback on something that Ash said that I think all three of these guys do a really good job. One of the best ways that you can build your community is to support the people that support you. Like it feels so good when you, they can see you in their chat. You have to be talking. Some people keep the viewer list up. They know who's in there and who isn't. And just seeing your name, just knowing that you're there for, the, you're there for them, like they're there for you, that 
promotes loyalty and it just continues the cycle. Yeah. And they're both, all three of you guys, really good at that. All right, so here's where we get a little bit in the weeds, and we this is where the content warning may come in, where some of us talk about things that have happened to us um, and why we need these things. So moderation. Um, so for those that don't know, who here is new-ish to streaming? You raise your hand, it's okay, I ain't gonna bite. Um, so do you all know what Automod is? Yeah. Verbal confirmation, yes. <laughs> Are there any no's in the audience? Okay, so for the no in the audience, um, Automod is a tool where you can basically say you can have levels of what can come through your chat. So obviously if someone comes in and says a slur, you can be like, really high level, nothing comes through, and it may cause a little more work for your moderators, but weigh the safety of your community versus a little extra work for yourself and the mods. Low means basically anything goes, and it's like, mm, I don't know about you, I'm not being in your chat. You can also set banned phrases and words because, you know, the brown folks in the audience know all, all the variations of the word nigger will come through that people will try. People get real creative when they want to be racist. <laughs> They're so creative. Are they creative? I've they never go seen out so of their many way. damn variations. Uh, I've, call it creative. I've got a recent so story creative. on that. Oh, oh go ahead. And then I got one from this week. <laughs> yeah, it was just this week. Yeah, I was uh, playing the new Call of Duty. And it's not a directory I'm usually in, but everyone knows Call of Duty is typically a little toxic with all the kids. Huh. And, uh, you know, just someone, it, it's, it used to happen a lot more, but someone just came in and typed the N-word, hard R. It's spaced, so the, the mod thing wouldn't catch it. And it's, I mean, it, it's, it happens so much to, I'm sure, all of us that it almost doesn't phase us anymore, but it's like, come on. So I, uh, I put it on Twitter, and I, I tagged Twitch support. Oh. And uh, I can't remember his name, but he, he was tweeting me right back. And he even asked me, like, do you have Automod on? And I didn't. I am, my chat is very, I, I, I let, I it's let my chat go. Caboose. Yeah. <laughs> but See, things like that are going to come through. And, you know, he, uh, the, the guy at Twitch yeah. was like, you might want to set Automod at least to one. So uh, <laughs> I went ahead and did that. But Yeah. So uh, I, I got in a few streams, like everybody and their mother that was streaming before TwitchCon, and it was like racist o'clock from the word go for me on Tuesday. I don't know what was in the water. Was it a holiday from school? But I got called the N-word, got ashy spam. People came in and asked why you can't use Trihex in my channel. If Trihex in here, if you're in here, I'm sorry. You're a nice dude, I'm sure. <laughs> but your emotes are used to harass black folks. Um, but it was just like, what's in the water today? And occasionally it happens. And then some days it's cool, like, if I go off and play Dragon Age, nobody cares. But I was playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? What, what is in the water? So this is why we talk about moderation, because for some people, that has put them off of streaming on Twitch. It has put them off of wanting to, or they tried, and they're like, oh, I got called a nigger like 20 times in five minutes. I'm done. Peace out. And it's because maybe they didn't know about these tools. Um, so does anyone else have a story they're comfortable sharing or do you want to talk about like the reporting tools? Have you used them and using bots to moderate? Cause I, I know I talk about this quite a bit, but I want to hear from you all. I have a story. Um, one of my emotes is actually like a troll emote for when people come in and they say stupid stuff. It all came from a joke one day where I guess somebody came and said some racist crap and I was like, oh, a wild cock has appeared. So she, she has a rooster emote. She has a rooster yeah, emote. Yeah, I have a cop, Not like the a other rooster one. hiding behind a bush. Yes. And it's, it's a, I use, basically the community uses it to let me and the moderators know when it's someone in the chat saying something slick. Once I see like all these chickens pop up, I'm like, who did it? But usually, <laughs> usually my moderation team is really good. So usually they're gone already, but like we make jokes, like, you know, I'm like, oh, yeehaw, Twitter done pulled up, it's lit. Like, we, we, <laughs> we talk a lot of junk, and we make hella jokes. Um, sometimes it can be annoying, but most times we do, like, make fun out of it. They get mad, they leave. But once I see, I'm like, oh, a wild cock has appeared. Here come these emotes. Like, we make jokes, so. All right, no feedback from the audience. This is not church. It's not call and response. <laughs> when we get to Q&A, we can come up to the mic. Because also, people watching can't hear you if you holler from the audience. 
Um, does anyone else have thoughts about using a bot, using commands, like how you've dealt with this? Because I just have Automod cranked all the way up. I don't care anymore. I'm like, mm. you can't talk to me. Yeah, she doesn't. Inter- she doesn't feed the troll. Like Tanya does not at <laughs> all. She, don't play. she moderated for me one time and banned my best friend because she was not playing. <laughs> Your best friend wasn't acting right. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it was also when you had front page during Black just, History yes, Month. Yeah, oh, okay. It was a lot yeah. going on. And I was like, I, oh, it's like that. Yeah. Okay, you can go to it. And Jen was like, no, it's okay. <laughs> I, I got one command for that. I think it's what is it? Has a, it's a cock command, and it says, "Has a wild cock appeared? Use this to report them." And then it has a like a link to Twitch support to report. Oh, nice! Uh, trolling and stuff like that in case, like on the fly. That. I'm gonna steal reporting. that because I'm subscribed yeah, to you. Everyone's stealing it. <laughs> but as far as using bots, uh, you can if you don't already know, yeah, Nightbot is free, and there's other bots you can pay for. But just about all of them have a moderation setting or tab or whatever, you can type in certain words and the bot will automatically, you know, time people out or block the word for you without needing a human interaction. So if anything, if there's any words or anything that you don't want around, use it. It will help you. And it's a good idea, like, to, like, when he had the N-word spaced out, like, whenever you see someone do a new variation that slips through somehow, go ahead and add that to Put your band in. list words. And you can even add emotes to your band list words. Like, a lot of people don't know that. Mm-hmm. that well, that's how she does prevents the trihex. Trihex, try hard, yeah, mm-hmm. whichever. Yeah. <laughs> you just put the, the code in your band words list, and they can't do the emote. Yep. All right. In the interest of time, let's uh, move on a little bit. So let's talk about modding, though, really quickly, because... For those that do stream and have your mods, I want to talk about how you picked your mods because here's the thing I'm going to say, and this goes back to like making friends and networking. Don't make somebody a mod just because they're your buddy. They may, y'all may have a personal relationship, a friendship, but when you're on Twitch they and they're not familiar with the lingo and the culture, it could end up real mm-hmm. bad. Don't make somebody a mod just because they're your friend. So two of the four of you, talk quickly about how you get your mod squad right. Uh, I'll speak up. I have two of my mods in here. They're, they're in the audience, and I'll let y'all know right now. My mods don't do anything. They're terrible. <laughs> Majin, you're not selling your channel, man. <laughs> no. Um, like, like I said, my channel is a real anything goes type of thing. I, I I know a lot of people on Twitch don't allow like you know political talk or religious talk or anything, and I'm I'm of the belief that you know sharing your your Sharing our ideas as humans is what helps us grow. We're not all going to agree. We're not all going to get along. But a hive mind is never a good place, uh, as long as you're respectful to everyone. So I let a lot of things go. We talk a lot of mess to each other. A lot of my mods are people who've just been around a long time in my chat. They were None of them were personal friends before I started streaming, but they, they were around, they put in the time, and they understand what I'm about and what my channel is about and how we do things. Therefore, you know, when people do come in and try and say something, they're not getting banned all right, right away. We give them a chance, but they do know, you know, people come in and say the N-word or they're just trying to pop off. We'll get them out quickly. I have over 25 moderators. 30. Well, I was I was a PUBG streamer and I was a Fortnite streamer, so that mm. should just say why. Toxic. Uh, Fortnite is toxic. Okay, if you're a black streamer playing Fortnite, you better have your mods. Mods better be ready. I have try hard a purge in my channel. I have. Okay, there's a. I know. Did they add the KFC emote? Winner, winner. Or chicken winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. You see someone yeah. just spamming that emote. You know what they're. Inside yeah, someone yeah. new. They're like, yeah. get out of here. Ban, you're out of here. If you're um, racist, homophobic, out. I'm strict. I yeah. don't care. I don't tolerate it. There's no one chance. No, you do yeah. that once, it's you're going to do it again. Yeah, I'm a strict. I'm just very strict. And this is but why I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have chatbot and I have automod and I add different variants to my Streamlabs chatbot to ban and purge those words automatically. And yeah, I have my mod squad down in a Discord. We have a mod channel, and I talk about, hey, I don't want this being said, ban that, and how should we handle this situation for my channel and all this good stuff. So having a Discord server for your mods is really important mm-hmm. too, so you can communicate with them and make them feel responsible. Yeah, my <laughs> mods are usually like in the mod channel, and mm-hmm. they get a role in Discord. Like when racist o'clock happened on Tuesday, I was like, where are y'all at? I know somebody's awake. Some of you are in Europe. Where is everybody at? And they glad came I was in. at work that day. <laughs> what? I'm glad I was at work that day. Look, it was a day. It was a day. Um, but, you know, 
talk about that. And one thing I would also say before we move on is check in with your moderators. Make sure that they are understanding what you want as a streamer. Are they doing what you need them to do? Are they still comfortable being mods? Like, if someone's been a mod for a while, maybe they need a break. Maybe they don't want to. Maybe life changes. Because people will all be like, well, I can't leave. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mod. And I, you can leave being a mod on a channel. It's mm -hmm. okay. So as streamers, also check in with your mod folks, especially if you are at a point where your community is really big, and these people are doing a lot of work for you. Right, and you're, it's not like you're paying them unless you're like ninja or something, so definitely right. you know, make sure they're good. Okay, so just in general, I'm a firm believer in rules. Anyone who's ever visited my channel will see like the 10 bullet points that I have as rules, because people are terrible on the internet. Um, so just quickly, we have Mira's rules. Mira's like, look, I ain't messing with y'all. <laughs> and then um, Ash's rules, which is like so polite and nice. I love it. Um, Majin, do you have a set of rules on your channel or no? I don't even remember. Probably not oh, at this point. How it's, did you get where you are now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I need to know. That's also a good question. <laughs> and Jenny, you have a set of rules. I right? have a set of rules. I don't remember what they are, but I have some rules. Because yeah. you can't just come in and be loose in the caboose like you can be in his channel. <laughs> you got to tighten up. Mm -hmm. you, well, um, personally, I like to let... I don't like to do too much auto modding. I like to let the people deal with it. Because like I said, we my channel definitely allows more than others. So a that's probably more. why my, my yes. rules are a lot lax and we'll deal with it on a case by case basis. Yeah, so you know, find people you know, like look at our rules, find people that you like. If you like the way that they do their stream and the way they moderate it, look at their rules, be like, Hey, can I cop those rules from you? Because unless they're like super specific, you can share your rules with somebody. It's not mm -hmm. the end of the earth. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about Ash before we open it up for questions, Miss. I sleep two hours. <laughs> Let's talk about the importance of self care, especially as a person of color on this platform. Cause look, I was ready to just like turn off everything, go take a nap after racist o'clock on Tuesday. And hey, that's the first bullet point: take a nap. How about that? Um, <laughs> but you know, sometimes it gets bad. Sometimes when you have those days where you get called the N word and people want to spam monkeys at you and KFC. What do you do? Because it's also just discouraging sometimes to see like all these media mediocre white dudes. And yeah, I said it on purpose. I know we're being streamed. I don't care. <laughs> mediocre white dudes getting over and getting popular when you're out here busting your ass, streaming 40 hours on top of a 40 hour job and not, you know, maybe not getting to where you want to be or getting to what you want to do. I mean, Ash is kicking ass out here. But a lot of people do basically two jobs, streaming and a full time gig, and they're not where they want to be. And you know, we want to talk quickly about how self care is important and why it's okay to take a break and why it's okay to say, you know what, I don't need this today, I'm gonna take a day off or whatever. The stream will be there tomorrow. Your community, the people that care about you will be there the next day if you take a day off. I am actually still learning that, to be honest. Trying to give myself time and not worry about losing my community oh if i don't stream this day they're gonna hate me they're not gonna come back and i still have that mentality i'm working on it but i think ever since i turned 21 on saturday whoop, whoop, oh, wait oh, hold on we'll be going out for shots okay. wait a minute <laughs> i've been <laughs> drinking every day <laughs> So just to be clear, I do don't, not in, don't, I do not advocate overindulgence as a form of self care. No, it's <laughs> shot, shot, mature shot, drinking. Drink responsibly. Mature drinking. I've been living life. I've just shaken up. I don't know. Well, that's good. So if you are <laughs> over twenty one and buy responsibly. I'm, I'm now telling myself it's okay to live your life, and my community said, "Don't be sorry because you're living your life," yeah, and it made me cry. I. Yeah. I don't know. I always worry about the negative part of not streaming, but they'll always be there. And I can attest to that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I stopped streaming because of the wedding planning and the working two jobs yeah. and everything. I didn't stream from July, um, August, September, mm -hmm. <laughs> October. <laughs> <laughs> so I, took, I stopped streaming for like four months. I streamed again the other day. It was more viewers than when I was streaming on a regular basis. Your community is there for you. They care for you. They love you. Take care of yourself. Do not kill yourself streaming. Yep. Yes. Right. Because at the end of the day, Twitch is a product, and when you sign that contract, either as an affiliate or, st or partner, you are an independent contractor. You're providing content. You're also building a community, but the stream going to be there. If you overwork yourself, wind up in a hospital, or a stream to the point where you're falling out and you're asleep and you're not eating right or whatever, the community, yes, they'll care about you, but they also want you to be okay because they care about you as a person. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm talking about your community. I'm not talking about the randos that'll be mad, like, well, you weren't on yesterday. I'd be like, 
oh, but you're not even a subscriber. Where did you come from? Why are you here asking me this? Because it's always a concern a trolling from too. folks that ain't never been in your stream <laughs> that are mad like, well, I see your schedule says blah, 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 and you weren't on. Yes, because I needed a nap and a glass of wine. <laughs> That's why I wasn't on. Because um, I do want to make sure we have some time for Q&A because we can start ranting about this all day. Um, but I just want to talk about, you know, quickly, it is okay to play games off stream if, if you're a gaming streamer. Make yes. stuff off stream. Enjoy games again because for a while I hated games. Yes. And I'm someone that's in the industry. I don't want to have to hate something I previously loved that brought me to this platform because I felt that pressure to stream every day. Yeah. Definitely. So remember that gaming, creative, whatever it is that you stream will be there. Do it for yourself. Enjoy it again. Take a day off. Take a week off. And if your community is so fragile that they can't handle you needing some time to yourself, then maybe rethink the people in your community. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. Um, you know, go for coffee. Remember, you do have friends that are not on Twitch. Uh, hopefully, you have friends that are not on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not being facetious. I mean that seriously. Like, folks that you know, your family, et cetera. Twitch is not the be-all, end-all of your social interaction. It is okay to take a break. And I keep saying it because I keep running into people who think, well, I've, I can't take a day off. I, I'll never get partnered or whatever. I stream part-time. I, I have never been a seven-day-a-week streamer in my life, and I never will, because then I will hate it. Um, so think about what you're doing, self-care, especially as a person of color, because there's not a lot of us out here. Again, most brown folks I've seen at TwitchCon in my two years of coming in this room. We cannot burn out. We cannot burn each other out. So lift up other people. If you see your, your friends not taking care of themselves, send them a little note like, hey, you've been off for like five days in a row. Why don't you take a day off? You, you, you're sleepy. You, you fell asleep on stream. Take a nap. No, that's, that's caring about your friends. That's not, I'm not trying to be funny at all in this moment. If you see your friends burning themselves out on a quest for partnership, affiliate, whatever, don't take a damn break. It's okay. Whatever your, your passion is, like if it's gaming, make sure you're doing it off stream. Game off stream. If you, like, I love anime and you said go out with friends. I, me and my brother went to go see an anime, uh, the new My Hero movie, really good. <laughs> went and saw it in the theaters. Um, my kids, you know, that's, I take my son to school, I pick him up, it's football practice, like those are my times to get away from stream and not have to worry about it. And I think that's really important. Always have something like that that you love to do outside of, you know, just don't, don't try and stream the whole time. Take your mind off of it with something. Um, so in conclusion, network, don't use others. Use your social to self-promote, but also show that you're a real live person don't have your whole feed be like, I'm going live and tag like 80 people you know. Oh. That's the fastest way to get me to block you <laughs> or never come to your stream. I don't know about y'all quickly. When people tag you, you're like, I'm going live. And it's like, okay, and You probably shouldn't tag anyone when you're going yeah. live. Yeah. Unless, Unless you're, you're playing, playing with them. them. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Jinx, you owe me a soda. And do not use a support small streamers tag. No. You're not a small streamer. You're okay. A streamer. Yeah. If you demote yourself like that, you're that's end up staying. In you gonna stay that's in that the box. mentality you're gonna that. build on yourself Forever. with your content. Yeah. I'm small. And I can't and do the people and I'm gonna no. talk about the people I use that tag. I'll look and I have like three thousand people. I'm like, um, excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you count. <laughs> three thousand was not a small number the last time I checked. They they were short. They misunderstood what small meant. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let me not be that person. Um, but again, have a good mod team. Um, have rules if that's your thing. Don't be like Majin. Have rules. I love you, Majin. I'm just giving you our time. <laughs> and most importantly, self-care. Um, so we're going to throw some resources up. If you all have questions, please come up to either mic. Again, have a question. I will ask you to go find one if you don't have it. And don't try me. I've had three hours of sleep. <laughs> so we have eight minutes. Questions, go. Okay, come on. Y'all sat here and wrapped attention for 45 minutes and nobody has a question? They're taking pictures of your resources. Let them take the pictures. <laughs> well, other people can get up and ask questions. Go ahead. Hey, y'all. Um, <laughs> You're not moderating. Okay. So, Mira, you already mentioned how you deal with trolls sometimes. And yeah. I just wanted to hear what other people had to feel about when you have things like someone bringing in f like 50 bots and they're all spamming the N-word and or you just have a hate raid and how do you deal with that do you deal with it more like you just ignore it you keep doing your thing or are you like yo chat what's good <laughs> I can speak to that 
Um, so there's two things you can do when you're having like the 4chan raids or whatever. One thing, and I know it's terrible, follower only, five minute limit, because people who want to troll, they're not going to sit there and wait. They have really short attention spans. They got ADHD like me, so they're going to keep it moving. Another thing that you can do is you can actually go unlisted, so you're not showing in, the, in any game. They have to like literally try to find you, like Sherlock Holmes you, to try to figure out what it is. Those are two things that you can do to combat that. All right, but please let's not talk about people having ADHD as a bad thing. Okay. <laughs> I would say uh, just try and, like Mira said, with the, the emote that she has and then her chat kind of makes fun, turn it around. If they're coming in with the negativity, you and your community can, I mean, we just make fun of them and we turn it into a positive thing for, for my community. And then it kind of outs the people that are coming in trying to make fun of you because they see that they're not getting to you. You're laughing at them about it. What are they going to do? Yeah, I say it's also a screenshot and use a reporting tool because if, if there's that many people flooding your channel, it's clearly a bot raid, report it. Tell the people watching you that are your actual viewers, report it. Because I know it seems like it doesn't help, but that data does actually get to Twitch. And, and I can confirm that a real live person does look at these when you send in these reports. But take screenshots. And then if, you, if the reporting tool doesn't let you like find, I know there's twi like Twitch support Twitter, tweet screenshots at them. Like, hey, so this kind of happened? Can you help me out? Because as we saw, we reached out to Majin. Um, and there is an option, I think, that it says, I think there are bots on my channel. Or there's, like, when you go to the help and actually do a ticket, you can say, I think there's, I'm getting view botted. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank yes. You. Okay, so this is for, like, all the females up here. So, <laughs> <laughs> or the males, too. Males, too. Sorry. But, yeah. so, when you're wearing your hair, do you ever feel that you have to have it done? Or do you, that nah. you have to have this certain They came to watch me. F them. <laughs> 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 they showed up in my I channel. Know. If I got on a headscarf, they can deal. If I'm streaming at 7 a.m., you better be glad I'm awake enough to talk to you. <laughs> That's me, but... Yeah, I do feel that way. <laughs> I'm pretty much am not going to stream unless I'm looking immaculate that day. It's, it's, it's that simple. That's, that's just my personality. And some people don't even stream with cams on. So there's definitely people of color that do stream if they're not looking how, however their best is. Yeah, I got to have my lipstick. Yeah, <laughs> mascara. Mm -hmm. Definitely got a mascara. Yes. Um. I just do whatever, but I, because <laughs> some days, I remember one day I streamed with like a head wrap on. I was like, you know what, I'm going to try to finesse this one time for the one time and see what happens. Um, but I do try to, you know, make sure either my appearance is up or even if I'm feeling down, but I still want to stream, I might just turn the camera off. Like, right. Yeah. That's, I mean, I don't have hair. But At all. <laughs> I was going to say, don't let it discourage you from streaming. Turn your camera off if you're using yeah, a camera. I, my viewers it. will tell you, I get in like these sneezing fits. I don't know what's going on. My eyes get all puffy. I don't feel like you know, I need to be on camera at that point, so I'll just turn it off. But don't let it discourage you from streaming. Yep. Your community will be there. Camera, no cam. Hey, you. How you doing? Hey. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lady Infamous 415, Grown Woman Gaming. I have a question. What one advice you can say to the people that's watching live, especially the teenagers and little girls of color who wants to do streaming full time? What is your number one advice that you can give them right now? All right, quickly, one or two of you. Be yourself, we'll you're beautiful, regardless of what people say. No, you're not alone, because as you can see in this room, there's a lot of us. Yeah. Yeah. You may not be able to find us easily, but know that we're here. Find we folks exist. of color. Reach out on Twitter. Reach out on other places and ask who streams. Just be like, look, I'm, I'm like a black teenager. I want to stream. Who else does this so I can talk to you? Yeah. Use Embrace your black media. beauty. Mm. Yes. I will say, as, as for little girls of color, I feel like when I was growing up, it may be different now, but when I was growing up, Video games, it just wasn't something that girls, black girls did. I agree. It, it was odd. Yeah. And so coming to events like this where you can meet other people who um, do what you do, that is helpful. That encourages you to keep doing. So I would say reach out to other. If you see a black girl, is she a little different? Is she like me? Talk to her. Sit down with her at lunch. Maybe you guys both play The Sims. Maybe you guys both play some mobile game that I've never heard of because you're a teenager. But just find that <laughs> bonding thing because there are more people that are like you, even if they're a person of color, that enjoy this. It's not just you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. To oh, wait, two things. Be consistent and utilize analytics. That's all I want to say. <laughs> All right, yes. Uh, sort of a fun question. Uh, what are your guys' favorite memes at the moment, and memes. where do you like to find the best memes? 
So before we answer this, how is this relevant to this panel? Uh, I'm a professional meme account <laughs> runner. Not really. Uh, it's, there's a little more to that. Uh, but we're streaming on Twitch the way that we edit and come up with ideas uh, to writing certain jokes in memes. Uh, we also game on Twitch. So I'm just asking all the Twitch streamers that I meet that um, question. I usually hate memes, but I kind of like Bongo Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Memes come to mind for me. I'm boring. I'm real old. People have to explain to me what a meme is. Right. I'm still I'm not like, quite what, what sure because it seems like what it's a this? picture. It can be a song. I don't. I don't get it. <laughs> I just. I just look at whatever's hot, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just scroll. Right. I don't even use Facebook for Facebook. I'm just scrolling to find some funny memes or videos at this point. Look, follow I am Brandon. He, him and the memes and the right. gifts. Yeah. Just follow him. <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, how's it going? How's it going, Mira? Oh, um, I'm Young Khan. I, I made your e some of your yes, first emotes. Yes, he made my partner. emotes. Yeah, uh, I have one question for Mira. Is, uh, how do you place yourself on so many different social medias at one time? How do day? I? Like, where do you find the time? Like, I, I, I stream <laughs> full time and I, I work a graphic business full time. I can barely get myself to like go live on Twitter. Like, I just, and that's the same tweet I just copy and paste. I don't have time to get creative. <laughs> like, how are you on Tumblr, YouTube, oh, and all these different platforms? Okay. Even um, as a full-time streamer, I have to know. I basically, a lot of the promotion I tend to do like during my starting up screen, I'll literally sit there at my desk and go from social media to social media. I tend to have, um, what is it, templates, copy and paste across different hashtags for Instagram, Tumblr, Snapchat and I would like utilize it basically, mainly before I go live. And then on my downtime, I would use Tumblr and Twitter and I guess YouTube, but I use everything, all seven to eight channels in the start. You know when you have to start streaming channels? So yeah. we're gonna shotgun, just pull all the, all, all the websites yeah, at one boop, time. Yeah, just boop, boop, copy, paste, copy, paste. GIFs, I keep GIFs <laughs> and things pre-made for when it's time to go live. And when it's time, and I just unload, and then I go Good live. Question. All right, unfortunately, that is uh, time. So uh, we will hang out for a little bit us okay. right outside the hall. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, if you enjoyed this content, please, if you're using the app, please give us a rating, follow us on Twitter, say hi. You want to go over here? Yeah. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll be right over here if in <laughs> any other questions we didn't get to. All right, thank you so much.